Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for our monthly webinar at VSBA. Today, we are going to be talking about school board reorganization. Congratulations on beginning a new year, a new school board year. As we all know, next week is the beginning of school board reorganization with budgets being voted on and board members being elected. And it's important for your board to follow the steps that are required by law and to lay the groundwork for good board operations throughout the coming year. This webinar will provide the information that you need for your board reorganization meeting. Before meeting for the first time, all newly elected school board members, and this would be first time members and also reelected members, must be sworn in by taking the oath of office. The oath of office is usually administered by the municipal clerk. So that's an important detail to take uh, care of before the first board meeting after the election. At that first board meeting, the superintendent calls the first meeting of the board to order and opens the floor for election of the board chair. When choosing your chair, remember that the position promotes development of a strong board team, establishes a strong connection with the superintendent, organizes and conducts productive meetings, and promotes lawful and ethical operations. While seniority on the board can be a plus, longevity is only one consideration and may not be the most important thing to consider when electing a chair. Once elected, the chair leads the meeting. The first order of business is the election of other officers. Election of a vice chair is not required, but it is strongly recommended so that there will be someone to run the meetings in the event that the chair is unavailable. The clerk is responsible for ensuring that meeting minutes are kept and that draft minutes are posted on the website within five days of the board's meeting. Generally, these duties are delegated to a staff member or contractor, but the clerk is ultimately responsible for complying with these requirements. In addition to the officers, each uh, supervisory union or supervisory district has the ability to cast one vote to ratify agreements reached by the statewide healthcare bargaining commission. During the years when the statewide bargaining is occurring, please be sure to add appointment of the SU or SD's voting delegate for statewide health insurance to the first meeting of your board, as the ratification process requires each SU and SD to notify the VSBA of the name, telephone number, and email address of its voting delegate by April 1st. Each district that is part of a supervisory union elects representatives to serve on the supervisory union board. Districts that operate schools choose three members from each school board to serve as voting members of the supervisory union board. Districts that do not operate schools choose one member. Only those designated representatives may vote at SU board meetings. On to committees. If you're thinking about setting up committees, remember that the purpose of committees is to help the board do its job. You should be able to state the reason for having the committee. Committees must have a clear and documented charge defined by the full board and recorded in the minutes or um, in policy. And it should include the purpose, authority, membership, term, and timeline for the committee. The reorganizational meeting is also a time to make operational decisions, such as designating the board's regular meeting schedule and location, scheduling an annual board retreat to develop board goals and a work plan, and agreeing on the use of Robert's rules of order. Vermont law requires boards to use Robert's rules of order Boards with 12 or fewer members may opt to use Robert's rules for small boards, but must agree to do so. When using Robert's rules for small boards, motions need not be seconded. Informal discussion is permitted while no motion is pending. A vote can be taken without a motion being introduced if a proposal is clear to all present. 
and the chair may, without leaving the chair, speak in informal discussions and vote on all questions. Another operational issue is discussing and agreeing to a code of ethics covering areas such as agreeing to act within the scope of your official role as a school board member, upholding the highest ethical standards and respecting confidentiality considerations. There is a model code of ethics on the VSBA website. At this time, your board may also wish to agree on board norms, which will set the expectation for board members behavior during meetings and connected to meetings. Setting up board norms is also something that um, might be a topic for a board retreat or a special board training. The reorganization meeting is also a time to designate the official media for publishing notices. Other communications responsibilities include informing and engaging the community, responding to inquiries from the press, and sharing successes of students, staff, and schools. Many boards choose a chief spokesperson. Boards are also encouraged to consider the broader communication goals of engaging and informing the community, although in-depth discussions are often deferred until the board retreat. The reorganization meeting is the ideal time to review district policies on public comment and handling complaints. VSBA provides model policies on these topics and many more in its model policy manual on the VSBA website. Board development is another topic for the reorganization meeting. The full board should discuss and coordinate attendance at board development events throughout the year and create an annual plan to ensure that board members are getting the professional development and support that they need. In addition, the board chair and the superintendent should meet with the new board members to provide them with an orientation on board policies and practices. Finally, the reorganization meeting is a great time to discuss the board's role in advocacy. You may want to designate a specific board member to keep the board informed on current legislative issues. As a member of the VSA, you have resources available, including the weekly legislative blog, which is issued on Tuesdays, periodic legislative reports, and also legislative alerts. Your board can also engage in a statewide conversation about education by developing, discussing, and voting on VSBA resolutions, and also engaging your VSBA regional representatives and your local representatives in the General Assembly. To summarize, here's a checklist of board reorganization actions. Oath of office, election of officers, choosing supervisory union representation, committees, operational decisions, Robert's rules, code of ethics, communications, policy review, board development plan and advocacy. If you have any questions or concerns about reorganization, please feel free to get in touch with me. I am Sue Siglowski, executive director of the VSBA. The VSBA is here to support you through your reorganization and also your future board work. We wish you the best as you begin your new board year. Thank you for serving your community and Vermont's public education system.